that undergoes half of its evolutionary unfolding in the last hour and 35 minutes of its existence. This is, in fact, the kind of universe we are living in. What we have been told is that a process is pushed from behind by causal necessity, like a row of falling dominoes. Cause precedes effect. This is half the story. Half of what you see going on is simply the unfolding of causal necessity. But at a deeper level, the future is not simply empty space-time into which we are expanding. The future is pulling us toward itself. There is what I call the transcendental object at the end of time, or the eschaton, which means the last thing. The last thing is like an enormous attractor, which is pulling first biology, and then human history, and then the 20th century and all of our lives embedded in it, pulling us deeper and deeper into a relationship of self-reflection with it. In other words, we are being shaped by something literally unimaginable that lies ahead of us in time that three, four million years ago gently took hold of the African primate line and began to sculpt it and move it along certain developmental pathways, all toward self-reflection of this thing. And now we are cosmic moments away from encountering this thing. This is what the excitement of shamanism worldwide is now. Shamans are people who can see the end in some sense. Not that the end is predetermined. When you look into the future, you don't see something like the past, except that it hasn't happened. When you look into the future, you see a storm of space-time vectors and probability matrices that have not yet undergone the formality of actually occurring. That's the business of the present moment, to collapse that hyperdimensional set of space-time vectors into a here and a now with a causal identity and a vector toward the future. But we are now so close to this transcendental object that has molded the entire destiny of this planet, we are now so close to it that all you have to do is smoke a bomber, close your eyes, take a walk in the bush, sit on the beach, pay attention to your dreams, watch your mind after orgasm, and you will see this thing peeping around the edges, creeping in at the side. I mean, was it William Wordsworth who called it intimations of immortality? Something like that. Uh, we are not simply the victims of our past. This is the, the, the false truth of materialism and uh, and positivism, we are locked in an extremely mysterious relationship with something in another dimension, a dimension which, for want of a better word, we call the future. But in fact, this other dimension completely surrounds and encloses human history. This is what shamanism is about. Shamanism is where people step out of cultural time into what Marsiliad called inilio tempore, the time before, the sacred time, the paradigmatic time, dream time, you call it, down here. It's the time which surrounds the smaller time of historical uh, unfolding. What's unnatural? 
nothing is unnatural mm. except some things no. are less intelligent than others. <laughs> In other words, everything has a design, but elegance of design is still a worthwhile value. Nature, the interesting thing about nature is the risks that she's willing to take. Like if you ask yourself, what does nature do best on this planet? The surprising answer is, produces extinct species. 95% of all life that ever existed on this earth is extinct. That's what happens to life. What nature has been interested in is passing on complexification of form from species to species, genera, to genera over very long periods of time. And the fact that nature will tolerate our own dear selves as a part of the natural order indicates that nature is a far more reckless gambler than we are. Our impulse is to deny ourselves, hold back. Nature's impulse, apparently, is to put the pedal of creativity to the metal by taking a primate and pushing it to the wall, Push. boxing it in, raising the pressure, and watching the entire planet bubble its way toward metamorphosis. The whole point of psychedelics is to throw you back on your own experience. It is not an ideology. It is an experience. It may spawn this or that ideological interpretation. Marxists have something to say. Freudians have something to say. But it's not theirs. It's yours. It belongs to the animal body. And why it's so important, why it's so important is because it is a pipeline back to the greater order of nature which I call the Gaian mind. It is the pipeline back toward a dynamic, a way of doing things that is profoundly natural, profoundly appropriate. This is why it was possible for human beings to live on this planet for 100,000, 200,000 years, possessing language, theater, humor, so on and so on, everything we have, but not fucking up. Because they were embedded in, communicating with, aware of, and able to receive instruction from the Gaian intentionality. The mushroom once said to me, I mean, maybe the mushroom, uh, maybe the mushroom likes to sit on its backside, but 